Welcome back to the podcast, guys. Hope you're all doing well out there. In this video, we're going to be talking about the uh, latest on the potential unsealing of that search warrant affidavit in the raid on Mar-a-Lago. And we have some surprising news coming out of Florida, and that is because contrary to what me and everybody else who knows the law thought, the judge is actually considering releasing a redacted version of that affidavit. So I told you guys in my last video that if legal precedent is to be followed, the judge would not release any of this stuff to the public, as that is the normal course of events for a prosecution. The only time that an affidavit is released is after the uh, indictment has come forward from a grand jury and uh, a, an alleged criminal has been pointed officially out uh, by a grand jury, meaning a grand jury true bills the charges by prosecutors and officially uh, targets a person as uh, as somebody that may be found guilty of a crime. Right. But even then, there's still only alleged criminals. And then the trial process starts. The pretrial process starts. There's discovery and the target has a chance to file a motion to dismiss the indictment and do all this other good stuff that goes on in the legal system. But before that time, before the indictment or an arrest comes, you do not release search warrant affidavits to the public. But because of all the pressure, it seems like Judge Reinhardt is caving to that pressure instead of following judicial precedent. OK, so this is the latest decision that was put put forth by him today, basically telling the government that they have until next Thursday uh, to come up with redactions, because he says that he doesn't see a reason why the entire affidavit has to be uh, has to be sealed. As he says here, I find that on the present record, the government has not met its burden of showing that the entire affidavit should remain sealed. Really? Have you been a judge for two days? You don't know why? Because there's an ongoing investigation. That's why. So to me, it's very clear what's happening. The judge has gotten death threats from these MAGA criminals and traitors who support Donald Trump, and he's running scared. Okay, because I'll show you guys right now, a federal, uh, a former judge spoke on CNN. She was also surprised that the judge even is even considering releasing this at this point. Also with us, former federal judge Nancy Gertner, who's currently a senior lecturer at Harvard Law School. Judge Gertner, was it surprising to you that the judge in this matter set up the potential release of the of a redacted affidavit? It was very surprising. I'm, I, I think that he must be feeling the pressure from the public to find out what's going on. I'm still not convinced that anything material will be released here. The Department of Justice is on the horns of a dilemma. I would imagine that this is an affidavit even more, uh, even more exhaustive than most because they knew what the target was and they knew that there would be a pushback. And so now having laid it all out and more in an affidavit to have the risk that everything that they're doing become public is really, uh, you know, must be very, very troubling to them. OK, the, the government prosecutors have a right to build a case. And then after the indictment comes forward, the accused person has a right to defend himself. He has a right. It's called discovery where you um, where you you have a chance to defend yourself against the accusations from the government. But first, both sides have a chance to build their case. The discovery phase and the trial phase is when the defendant gets to defend himself. The pre indictment phase is when the government has an obligation to do their job to go after a criminal and build a case, okay? And then after he's been indicted, from that point on, the accused criminal has a right to defend himself. And the judge knows this, okay? This guy's been a judge for a long time. He's a federal magistrate judge, which is a low-level judge, but nevertheless, he knows the process as well as I and anybody else who knows American law. There's so many pre-indictment investigations that are going on right now, right? There are all these grand jury uh, investigations are all secret before, before a person is indicted. And there's a very good reason for that, okay? So let me tell you guys the number one reason. Because because what if you start an investigation into somebody because you get a tip that this person's a criminal, he's doing criminal action, and then you have an investigation, you, the police, either the federal police or the local uh, prosecutor's office, they look into it and they find that this person is not guilty. So if you go ahead and accuse somebody before the grand jury um, true bills the indictment, if the prosecutors or the FBI or whoever, if they just leak to the public, hey, we're investigating this person, then a huge amount of people in the public are going to assume that the person is guilty, right? Let me give you an example. If the Justice Department tomorrow puts out a press release saying that they're, they're investigating me, right, for whatever crime, then a large swath of the population, before even an indictment or a trial happens, they're going to assume I'm guilty because they're going to say, well, the Justice Department is uh, investigating Radoslav. He must have done something wrong, right? That's what, that's what they are going to say. So it's actually to protect the freaking defendant. 
to, def to b defend the criminal. That's why we have these rules. That's why we don't release these things to the public. And also, the criminal can use the fact that the prosecutors prematurely release this information at trial to say that the jury pool has been tainted. And guaranteed, Donald Trump's lawyers are going to use this, the release that this judge is demanding here, uh, or in redacted, even in redacted form, if, if information comes out here that is even, even close to being shocking or revelatory, Donald Trump's lawyers can use this later to, to say that the, the judge's ruling here and the actions of the Justice Department by revealing this information before an indictment, they tainted the jury pool. That's what they're going to say. That's a potential legal defense that can be used. So this is why you don't release any information pre-indictment. OK, after a criminal has been arrested or indicted, he has all the right, according to the Fifth and the Sixth Amendment, to face his accuser, to see the evidence against him, all this stuff that we all know that the Constitution provides. But Donald Trump has not been arrested. Donald Trump has not been indicted. He has no right to see this affidavit and no, neither does anybody else in the public. OK, the prosecutors have a right to build their case and go forward to an indictment. If they get a true bill, great. Then you guys, everybody gets to see it. The criminal gets to see it and we get to see it. But it's very, very sad that the judge is bowing to the terrorists who are trying to intimidate intimidate him. And I get it. He's scared because he's been getting death threats. And because of that reason, he's pressuring the government to uh, unseal this thing. OK, because all the losers on Fox News and One America Network, all these places are telling the judge to unseal the affidavit. So he's going against legal precedent just because he's afraid and because of all the pressure that's on him. It's very disappointing. So it is ordered that by noon on Thursday, August 25th, the government shall file under seal its proposed redactions along with the legal memorandum uh, setting forth the jurisdiction uh, justification, excuse me, for the proposed redaction. So this shouldn't even be a thing. OK, the government shouldn't have to explain to anybody why they want to keep an affidavit secret. So so let me explain to you guys what's going to be in the affidavit. OK, so there's because of the way that they write these things, the actual names of the witnesses are not going to be there. So but but then you would say, then why are you why do you want why do you not want to release it? Well, there can be other information having to do with their methods and techniques that can be revealed here because this has to do with national security documents. And also, some even if even though it's going to say like, uh, C1, confidential informant one or witness one, W1. That's how that's how the people in there are going to be uh, designated. So there aren't going to be any names of the cooperators, but still the information that they have might point to who that person is. And Donald Trump will know who it is and he'll be able to intimidate or, you know, do other bad things to the person to make him stop him or her stop communicating with the feds. So that's one of the reasons. That's the main reason that their government is saying that they don't want to release it, because the information itself will point to who's doing the leaking. And Marjorie Taylor Greene has already said that the person who's leaking on Donald Trump are, is a traitor. And what do we do with traitors? They know they hang traitors. That's what they believe. And so that, those people, the people who are leaking on Trump will get death threats and maybe some of them will even be assaulted or killed. That's what you're putting in, in place by telling the government to forcing the government to release information about it. So the judge is, judge is not behaving well here. He's not behaving according to uh, judicial precedent. And so he's simply caving to all the lunatics on the right wing who are threatening some of them to even kill him. He's sacrificing the law because of the pressure that he's getting. This is a very disgusting thing that he's doing here. And by the way, just to explain to you guys what magistrate judges are, magistrate judges reason to exist is to take the burden, the work burden off of federal trial judges, because if uh, simpler things like signing off on search warrants uh, have to go to the trial judges, then their dockets will not be able to be fulfilled because trial judges have to sit for long trials for hours and hours a day. And they should not, they cannot and do not have the time to deal with simpler tasks like signing off on warrants because it doesn't take that much judici judicial knowledge to, to determine probable cause. Okay, That's why magistrate judges exist. They handle lower level things in the federal system that do not have to be uh, signed off by the federal trial judges. So magistrate judges are lower down on the rung than trial judges. And uh, their job is to take some of the work burden away from the federal trial judges. Otherwise, they would have to handle more work than they already do right now. So just wanted to explain the role of the uh, magistrate judges. I'm not putting them down at all. Most magistrate judges are good people and they follow the law. But sometimes some of them feel the pressure 
uh, especially now with this case, with the lunatics who support Trump and the violent criminals that uh, that are willing to kill for him. I don't blame him for being intimidated, but you cannot sacrifice the law and a judicial precedent. And you definitely can't take a risk hurting the government's case uh, against uh, Donald Trump by doing this. He should keep the entire thing sealed until the Justice Department finishes their investigation and decides to indict Trump. At that point, we will know that the government aims to take Donald Trump to trial if an indictment comes forward. That's what that means. And then you enter the discovery phase, the pretrial phase, and then we get to find out uh, all the details of their investigation. Okay, so there's a lot of time for everything to come out, but people can't wait. They can't even wait until the government is done with their investigation. They want to get gossip on it. That's what this is. They just want some juicy gossip. The media wants juicy gossip. And Donald Trump's side is scared uh, witless. Okay. To be clear, Donald Trump has not formally asked for the uh, affidavit to be released. They had a chance to file, but a whole bunch of media companies filed and that lunatic uh, running for uh, the Senate in New Hampshire filed. But uh, Donald Trump himself has not filed yet. So that's interesting. He's not asking for the affidavit to be released, which is why I didn't directly attack him. But he will certainly use the release of the affidavit to claim jury tainting later on. OK, that will be done because you'll say, well, the Justice Department and the judge acted very rashly and the release of this affidavit uh, made it seem like I was guilty before I was even indicted, Your Honor. So I want to dismiss the indictment because the uh, because of judicial misconduct and also prosecutorial misconduct. That's what they're going to say if this thing is prematurely released. OK, now it's not a guaranteed victory, that argument, but some judge might might buy it, whoever they go in front of. So you don't want to give any uh, power, firepower to the Trump side. You want to keep everything by the book. And releasing this affidavit is not by the book. OK, so even in a redacted form, I do not want it released yet. If Donald Trump is indicted, then we'll get to see everything. But until that point, it should not be released. That's the bottom line. All right, guys, so that's all I got to say for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, make sure to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell, press all for future videos. And uh, if you want to support my work, you can do so by joining channel memberships down below by clicking the blue join button. And you can also support me by going to Patreon by going to the link down below in the description box. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time. As always, peace. Here you go, Ranko. Two more no caps and two more donuts. Thanks, darling. <laughs> Any time. Hey, Renko. She likes you. Chicks dig a man in uniform. Well, they don't dig me. You just don't try hard enough. What do I do wrong? You gotta look like you ain't her. How does that work? Uh-oh. Look sharp. Huh? Sitting with your back to the door. What if I were a perp? Dread. Hi. I asked you a question, Judge Hill. I'm facing the door, Dread. We got all angles covered. Oh, yeah. Draw! <laughs> it's all right, citizen. I'm making a point here. Judge... Renko, if I were a perp, this gun would have taken your head clean off before you could draw. Sloppy. Yeah, right, Tread. Thanks for the tip. You people with A-Watch. No, we're B-Watch. What would we be doing here? I, I make it 1630. If you're on B-Watch, then you're on duty. Uh, yeah, we are. Well, then what are you doing in a drunken diner? Uh, Dredd, easy now. Well, we're supposed to take meals in public around here. Yeah, yeah Dredd, it, like, ups our presence, even on breaks. To deter criminals? Uh, yeah. I caught a code 14 across the street, right under your noses. Oh, yeah, Gimpy, oh, we're gonna deal with that. Oh, after you break? Uh, uh yeah, yeah. You yeah. need a break every ten minutes, do you? Uh, uh no. Because well, this is an eight-hour shift. What was your first assignment? Sitting in here on your asses and eating donuts? Uh, we, uh, uh, sorry, Dredd. Don't be sorry. Be a judge. Get out in the streets and do your job. Yes, sir. I'll be watching you. And put your helmet on. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir.